A thousand or so miles from Kiev, Imatra might look like a different world, but the repercussions of the war there are only too real for those living here. With Russia just minutes away, the prospect of this becoming NATO's new frontier suddenly feels closer than ever before. My house is like 300 meters from the Russian border, so... And everybody has something to say about it. I hope that uh, NATO will be uh, uh, our solution. It's not a like total cure, but it's some kind of uh, some some kind of security any, anyway. Mun oma mielipide on ei NATO. On että se Putin ja kiusaa kovasti. Normally we've been with Russia and very good friends, you know, and very good neighbors. Of course, there has been some arguments and everything, but still we've been getting, getting along quite nicely. But now when we go to NATO, it can be changed radically also. It's not quite in living memory, but the scars left from the last time an expansionist Russia invaded its neighbour run deep. We fought 105 days against them and never surrendered. But we were alone. I remember the words of my father, who was a war veteran, a fight pilot. He died 10 years ago. He said that if we have the chance, never more alone. The last time Russia invaded, Finnish soldiers blew up this tank right by the border. More than 70 years on and the two countries have been working closely together. But the conflict means that relationship is once again changing. Here is an illustration of how close we are to Russia. If you look behind me, you can see that watchtower in the distance. Well, that's it. Now, this border, which was closed during the pandemic, was expected to be open again. Now, freight is still going through, but it's closed to tourists from both sides. And those Finns that were regularly going over to Russia to get their cheap petrol, well, they're not able to do that either. So those important links between both sides have now been severely severed as a result of the war. Ice hockey and other winter sports are some of the main attractions, luring in Russians from across the border. But its closure means less money coming in. Impact on the economy of this region for the border, it's, it's really huge. It's one million euros per day. Our location has been like a, our, our strategic advantage. We're the gateway to, to uh, Russia, but now the gate is closed. The frozen terrain isn't all the countries have in common. They share strong cultural and economic ties. And in the region's biggest city of Lapin Ranta, there are at least 2,000 Russian speakers. The community is well integrated, but we're told the war has changed attitudes, with some saying they've experienced an anti-Russian sentiment. As we have heard from our friends, uh, Russian native friends, so um, it's getting a little bit tense and they feel that there is a little bit aggressive talking. There are um, a small minority who is now um, getting more loud and they are saying that uh, Russian should go there from where they came from. And there's concern that discrimination against Russians could trigger a reaction from Vladimir Putin. Politicians are taking steps to maintain harmony by holding meetings for Russians to speak openly about their feelings and experiences. I and some people in the city of Lappeenranta, we wanted to meet with the Russian people with Russian background to just to have a talk and establish a connection to avoid any possible trouble in the future. There will come the day when we have to cut the ties to Russia. We have to cut the strings. Yeah. And now is the time. It hurts a while. If you take quickly a plaster away, it hurts a while, but then it heals. Peace and tranquility isn't hard to find here, and it's hoped that continues as it has done for decades 
as the war rages on.